the first main uh, point to understand was transcending uh, the man-made system, the man-made order. So, uh, because we have we live in a system that uh, is mostly concerned with survival sustenance and uh, systems to enable that there are there is division of labor and uh, systems and processes that have been conceptualized by mankind and one of those systems is language so i made a poem uh, which is based on how mankind intended language to be used or what its purpose was so if language could speak it would say know what i mean for all should agree in thought and speech in actions aligned to a common need and in turn ask another to see just as once you were told to be mm -hmm. oh that's very brilliant uh, poetry uh, please uh, read it once again and uh, explain okay if language could speak it would say know what i mean so uh, so this talks about uh, if language could express what its original intent was the way it was designed then it would say you must know what i mean what my words mean because these words are all it is a common agreement between us that this word means something and this word has another meaning and each word is assigned a meaning so that's why i say for all should agree in thought and speech in actions aligned to a common need because finally the purpose of language is to convey to another and make everyone work in this system and so that coordination is enabled and then so that uh, actions are in congruence with each person so but uh, you, have, you, have, you have used the word common need what do you mean by the concept of need there common need here i mean the basic needs of survival sustenance of and course yes because course it all the, the, mm, proceed, first, proceed. the first uh, uh, purpose would have come with uh, 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 making everyone work towards say a system of farming or cultivation uh, uh, that's a little good thinking but uh, quite possibly the first possible uh, relevance of uh, uh, the origin of language is, as you mentioned, is to convey the need. I mean, to, if you look at the language development of children, yes, sir. of course, all the languages that a child would pick up would all be centered around conveying the need. Calling Amma is uh, uh, initially to, let's say, fulfill the, the need for food. And it can include calling Amma to fulfill the need of uh, just your presence. So that need is quite uh, correct and clear. Okay. Yes. And even in normal, even in normal communication, 70 to 80 percent of the time, the language is to convey a certain need. In other words, some kind of a need is hiding somewhere in the forest of that language, silently triggering all the words and sentences and uh, arguments and debates and agreements and disagreements and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. including the very need of communicating with someone, you know, just, just to communicate someone. So mm -hmm. language is uh, uh, inherently linked with uh, uh, some need somewhere uh, by the language network uh, orbits, mm. including the need of companionship, all right?
Yes. So that need is uh, the, 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 the right language there. All right, proceed. Okay. And in turn, ask another to see just as once you were told to be. So. Oh, just... that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Explain. Uh, so in the uh, process of uh, using this language and adapting to the system, we are when we pass on this language to another we are again directing them to look at things in a certain way and learn what each word represents and what how to communicate and what everything means yeah just uh, language as a tool to teach and train and mold and modify and induce and instruct behaviors and uh, uh, knowledges about knowledge or knowledge is about knowing and doing and being included, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonder, wonderful. Yes. Yes. So that is what those two lines mean. Uh, so, uh, so I would like to. Uh, Ashadi, just a minute. Uh, go back to the previous slide, and we have to explain a little more about the last line. Okay. Taking it as an independent unit. Yeah. Just as once you were told to be. Yes. Um, so we are asked to behave in certain ways and do certain activities, all using the tool of language. Of course. Yeah. And uh, by default, there are these ideas that are uh, transferred to us about what we are and what we should be doing. And uh, uh, it, it uh, molds how we do and see things. So just as we were once taught and trained into this system of language. Now we are transferring that to another person and telling them how they should behave and be. And uh, of course, you uh, can link, uh, link here again back to the beginning. The very language is trained again by language. La yes, 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 yes. And the meanings of words, again, in language. Language comprises uh, assemblage of words and uh, meanings and uh, senses and implications, denotations and connotations and significations of those words are, again, uh, clarified, explained, described by language. So language is a very uh, eccentric thing that it can be developed only by using it. You know. Yes, sir. I did not notice that. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hmm. So uh, yesterday, I mean, in the past week, I had a, a particular experience. So I uh, now that currently, uh, after resigning my previous job, uh, I'm not involved in any particular project as such. And uh, I don't have a job. And I have uh, quite some time to do the things I want. So in this time, uh, it so happened that uh, there were a lot of advertisements from this uh, company called Whitehead Junior saying they are... Uh, looking out for piano teachers and uh, even though i'm just a beginner at teach at learning the piano i had uh, given my name for it a while back and then they called uh, and said that it, it's okay that i'm a beginner they just need uh, someone who can play it does the person does not have to be certified or have exam qualifications so then they conducted uh, a few, uh, two rounds of uh, exams with uh, questions and then I had to play a certain piece and everything. 
and uh, i crossed those uh, interviews but then uh, when i uh, uh, even after passing those interviews i did not feel very content with it and i felt something was wrong uh, the then i felt that i did not do all that well and i was i did i was very evidently not that highly qualified at playing some of the pieces but they said i did excellently well and then i was a little confused and uh, i and unsure if it is just me looking down on myself or if actually there is something wrong then uh, uh, me and my mother we uh, looked up on the internet and uh, at first we thought you know hrithik roshan comes in the advertisements for this company saying they teach coding so it can't be bad but then when we looked at the reviews it turned out that uh, they uh, there were a lot of uh, complaints on how they cheat people and uh, they say you your kid will get enrolled in go i mean will get a job in google and will become an expert in coding and even when in my interviews they told me you you have to praise the child and say that they have great potential and uh, tell the parent how exceptionally brilliant they are and things like that so uh, then it so we finally realized that there is a lot of fraudulent activity going on here where uh, they just want to somehow impress the parent and the child and uh, employ people part time pay them very less and uh, get a lot of money that way so mm -hmm. then uh, so i thought it would be a good example to point out some major uh, traps here so the first one is celebrity trap i mean mm -hmm. that uh, because there are big people like shahrukh khan and hrithik roshan advertising for these companies like byju's and white hat junior and everything and people think uh, their uh, children will become brilliant if they enroll in these things that's how it's advertised and even in this uh, monson case that's very popular in kerala now uh, where he uh, tricked so many celebrities like even mohan lal and all those people into buying fake artifacts so celebrity trap seemed like a one uh, important trap where a celebrity does something and we just believe it easily uh then of course other traps like the language trap on what music is and what piano is uh and how what can be expected of the child as an outcome and the intelligence trap and speed trap uh because the they uh, in the test they ask you to look at a piece and uh, play it the moment you see it it's called sight reading you as soon as you see it you must be able to recognize the notes and play it but then i felt uh, reading like that it you do not have the time to observe the piece of music and see, hear what it sounds like and take time to reflect upon it and uh, the other uh, system induced fears such as fear of failure and humiliation are also important mental traps uh, in this um, yeah that's beautiful yes sir so so i uh, i it was lucky that i heard the sound unheard that uh, what the parent expects of the child to you know become great and uh, start earning a lot of money by getting employed at google when it's for the coding class or they expect the child to learn piano very quickly in like a few months time and the teachers also they do not care about the qualification they just have a preset uh, module which they almost ask to learn by heart and then we just have to say it to them and sound encouraging and happy and everything and of course the corporate mindset which wants to uh, hire as many of these teachers as possible who are probably just normal people but in need of some money and then they exploit them um 
so then uh, i thought of comparing it with uh, the story of master thief so in the master thief um, i i was actually a bit confused is the master thief even though he is a master at the art of uh, robbery of uh, thieving is he doing an unethical act and uh, is uh, these people these people such as these corporate companies who make fools of a large uh, crowd of people uh, they are they seem like master cheats so i was wondering on the uh, ethical aspect of the master thieves doing and uh, i think uh, i wanted to ask sir that whenever uh, he can explain uh, ask it now what is the precise question uh, so in the parable of the master thief we are talking of a talking about a master thief so is his act unethical by the way what do you think or what do what is your choice to decide about that uh i don't want to think of it as an unethical act even though he is breaking into palaces yeah exactly exactly because uh, in the case of uh, of course by the legal systems which are mostly based on the collective mindsets and the uh, collective realities where people are liable to feel uh, defeated or disappointed or worried about the loss of things uh, the legal system is uh, definitely justified to create a loss against uh, so called thieves okay that's uh, reality on one side but uh, if you look at the performance if you look at the doings and uh, even the state of being of the so called thieves their the the competence is required the control over the mind required the control on the body required uh, the uh, control on the intellect required that means presence of mind the quick response etc uh at that level of the being they are uh, surprisingly or unfortunately or fortunately that's a very superior compared to a great majority of uh, otherwise uh, socially accepted competency levels as i have told you already some of my interviews and you can also visualize by the very parable of the master thief his competency not only to uh, perhaps steal but also to train his son in a, in a unique way by taking him to that place and during that journey he must have definitely communicated by language by knowing so as well as by doing the essence of how to escape from a trap so as a trainer uh, as well as a doer Uh, he is a metaphor of very high levels of human doings yes sir that is what we are looking for that's what we are looking for today morning mantra rishiga was telling me uh, quoting some example maybe influenced by the stories of this as you mentioned uh, that uh, monson mongol mm-hmm. he said yeah it seems that uh, early highly competent or creative people uh, become this kind of uh, manipulators because exactly. probably probably they are not properly directed or guided by someone very superior because when a child is uh, inherently competent or coincidentally competent by developmental uh, situations that particular child needs a super person to train him or educate him that's not happening all of them are similarly taken uh, or taken for granted they all go to schools and sit in the common classes and they, their powerful intellect gets uh, sort of dissatisfied with that quite possibly uh, such a dissatisfied people or people dissatisfied with the schooling system are the so called highly creative positively creative people also 
like great writers, great philosophers, great musicians, great dancers, great film directors, great entrepreneurs uh, uh, included. Yes, so uh, I was wondering if I, if uh, this John, what you call Monson Mongol had met me some 20 years back, I don't know what he would become. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, wonderful. Yes, of course. But that was that, the only. That was the only question. No, from that perspective, then, uh, if the master thief can be appreciated so much, uh, then it uh, it seems. Uh, then how are the master uh, these master corporates who cheat people uh, different? No, no, no. The, you mean the corporate uh, managers, sir? Yes. Who yeah, are, uh, who yeah. Are lying very evidently to the people. Yeah, def uh, definitely, definitely. Large corporations uh, uh, are definitely cheating and manipulating the populations, no doubt about that. But when you uh, talk about uh, uh, that uh, reality, it is not that the corporate, it is not that the managers, someone among them, Someone among the vice presidents or some CEO or some of the one, one, just one manager has created that idea that every one of you must understand. All the great moments, all the great events and episodes, wars or conflicts or calamities, they are all primarily initiated or the origin is just with one person. That one person talks about to another person and it spreads. No two people can have the same original idea, at, at least at the same duration. So we say the government has taken a decision, for example. It is not the government, it is it originated by one of the secretaries. And he talks about it, and the secretary group of secretaries accept, and the government also makes their concurrence, and it comes. No movement, no movement in the world ever happens uh, uh, with an idea equally originated in more than one person at all, it is impossible. But instantly or within one hour, maybe two, three other people may join and it becomes a collective presentation, no doubt about that. Even the so-called uh, current uh, COVID virus, it originated with one person in Wuhan. So uh, that is the reality. So when you say corporates, it is just one one guy who has been cleverly recruited by the board of governors or the entrepreneurs or the top management. He makes the difference. So, uh, and of course, the so-called uh, corporate body agrees to that. So there is a master thief everywhere. Yes. <laughs> but uh, definitely corporate master thieves are... Uh, I, we can say they are really evil because that puts into trouble great majority of populations. Or if a thief might be disturbing the equilibrium of one family or maybe 100 families in a lifetime, that's all. Yes, sir. Anyway, our concern, as we perhaps mentioned during the discussion about Master Thief, was to look at only the competency side. I have written that book also from that perspective. Rather, I said it requires the competencies of a super master thief in order to steal the hidden jewels of competencies within us. Yes, sir. Yeah, it also requires, I know, because I have done that discovery, so I know the kind of uh, uh, movements and uh, power of attention and conceptualization and uh, uh, and the strategies and required uh, in order to identify our own hidden jewels the jewels hidden in the deep palaces of our entity not guarded by but blocked by various uh, programs of the very mind itself so yes. that's what you also mentioned the gateless yes. gate yes. only a master thief can cut across the gateless gate not a doubt about that yes other uh, rather, I mean, only the one who has the mindset and the body set and the intelligence set and the intellect set and even the spirit only can cut across or transcend the gateless gate of enlightenment too. Yes, sir. Ashwati, yeah.
थैंक यू सर ऑल राइट